Hey folks, back in the old mech room. We're going to do a little upgrade today and some load testing. We're going to switch from lead to lithium. So I have two Fortress, 18 kilowatt, 360 amp hour, lithium, LifePo, or lithium ferrophosphate 4 is the chemistry. And these are nice, they're on casters and stands. So I've got up 720 amp hours of lithium here. And I'm going to hook it up to the old Radian, which has just been work a good workhorse now for three years. And so we're going to do some back and back compare back to back comparisons with some lithium versus lead. And um, I was going to do a separate home runs, but I actually pulled we pulled the battery cables out of here. And we're going to use those because we have um, a bus bar in here that will parallel these. They said the software in each battery is capable of doing the balancing. And the reason I was concerned about that is this one's like at 40% and this one's like at 70%, I believe. And so we wish we just want, we don't have any problems when we fire it up. So you'll see in here, 250 amp breaker, positive and negative, same on this one. And here's our four home runs. So that'll parallel it up and then we'll fire this thing up. Obviously I have to change. This is an 8048A. So it has the, that's for the advanced, has the algorithms for lithium and the Midnight Classic 200s can also charge lithium on solar. So I'm going to start off with just the inverter and AC charging. So this is going to be a, kind of a multi-phase. Uh, these are eventually going to go on a dual 12K solar here in a different powerhouse. And, uh, and so I'm going to keep my system going here. I know some of you will say, well, those aren't EMP hardenable and they're not. Um, but I'm always going to keep my old faithful. And this battery is just well taken care of and equalized um, often. And uh, distilled water is always monitored. So this battery to me, because I babysit it, will last me a long time 20 years so this will go back on the radian when i move these to the solar but in the meantime i wanted to run the outback with the fortress just to give you a little comparison between uh, lead and lithium so we're going to hook her up change some settings in the mate and in the classic and start charging and start running some loads so this has been a really good system, but things change. This is old technology. It, in no way does it perform like the Solark in terms of uh, efficient, its efficiency. And uh, I do have another one of these, just the inverter part that I need to put together, but I don't have this GLC load center. So anyway, that's another project. I, so we're, we're talking different batteries. We're talking stacking. We're talking different inverters. So for now, we're going to hook it up today. Fire it up, get these batteries charged up, and see how it performs. All right, all right. We're prepping these batteries. We are putting a little bit of no ox. Uh, we call it affectionately goose grease, and uh, we use it for our battery terminals. Some people say you don't need it, but we're going to do it anyway. It doesn't hurt anything, and uh, improves conductivity and fights corrosion. Automotive and marine applications industrial application so anyway we just carry it with us forgot on the last job and i heard about it so we're going to do it right this time okay we are using some power now to charge this battery up it was only at 37 percent when we started we're at well it's charging pretty fast we're at almost 40 percent the maximum charge rate see that upper right is at like 98 i've kind of yeah the maximum charge rate is 100 amps per battery obviously when you parallel them together you can that'll cut that in half so uh so cool so we're actually i'm charging the battery now with the outback radian and i've done it on solar but it's a cloudy day so i really needed this thing to come up so what i'm doing is balancing these out technically there's a balancing that can be done between the cam bus with uh, ethernet cable I can put the two together and let them balance but 
they were so far out i called fortress and they're like just charge them up get them within a half a volt of each other then stack them parallel them up um because this one was almost 80 this one was at 37 so i'm gonna let this thing charge and again the beauty of a lithium they charge a lot faster than a lead and uh so we're gonna let her go I'm putting about 5 kW in here and uh, 90 amps so she's coming up see just in that time she's at 40.5 so already come up three percent in a minute or so all right so forgive me this is my first uh hooking up of a lithium ion of this size and uh to my solar system so what we're going to do is get them balanced and then parallel them and then do some load testing and charging so Yeehaw, lead versus lithium. Fun so far. Okay, hey. The next step after running this one and getting it charged, because this was really down low, 35%, 37%. Um, I brought the voltage up, ran it, and actually um, charged on solar grid and sold from it today and all that. So I'm at 53.7. This one's at 53.2. They need to be within the 0.5 volts. Oh, well, they are and I'm about to parallel these together. So I've landed my cables here. The breaker, 250 amp breaker is off. I've got my ethernet cable to connect the two. So I just need to land the uh, cables for this battery in the inverter. Okay, so with the Outback Radiant, I already have a bus bar in the inverter, negative bus bar, positive bus bar. So I've landed those, landed those to each battery. You see positive and negative. I've also set on the front, you have a touch screen where you can set, um, you set them all as a as slave first. You gotta go through the procedure in a manual, but basically you are make all your connections according to the manual and then set everything as slave. And then once you've turned on, they call it the air breaker, the 250 amp breaker, you'll start to see them balancing out when this one was flowing because I had charged it today back into this one. So the voltages should say the same, 53.4, 53.4. They're at a little different SOC. So it'll take some time to balance it out. You can see this one's taking power from the other one. 2.8 positive, 2.8 negative. So they're just, there's, I haven't turned the inverter on. So I kind of wanted them just to let them hang out for a bit, get happy with each other before because the, the manual wasn't very clear if I should do that let them balance out a little like let them sit overnight but uh, maybe they don't need to uh, maybe the communication cable handles that so anyway got a master um, 18 kilowatt 18 kilowatt 36 kilowatts of lithium iron phosphate uh, I was able to charge them fine today in the well the one so I'm Getting ready to turn my radian back on, button everything up after they behave. I just kind of want to let them sit there and balance out and just kind of get to get to know one another there. And you can see master parallel two, slave parallel two. All right, I just threw through the inverter, turned the inverter on, turned the charge controllers on. It's dark out, so... We're not getting any, we might get a little, little bit going in. So inverter's on, the mate's on, backup power's on. I still have the inverter in bypass while I'm playing. And uh, what do we got here? Little bulk, little, woo, 16 watts, 21 watts. <laughs> it's getting dark. So, um, yeah, 1.3 going out of that one. About the same. So. I'm curious to see how the flow of power goes into each battery. Because this one is at 77.8 and this one's at 90. So it did take a lot. It did move a lot of power into the master. So um, I'm going to put it. I'm going to go ahead. I said I was going to wait, but I can't. Too impatient. So I'm going to go ahead and put a bulk charge on the system. And uh, now that I've got two batteries in parallel, I'm not worried about overcharging. I don't think I have enough power in this charger. It's only a 6,000 watt, 6,000 watt charger. So let's give it a little bulkage. And um, I already made these settings for the one. So I'm going to start to bulk. 
So now it's going to dump some power. Let's see what happens here. Hopefully they'll... Oh, it's a scary sound at first. Oh yeah, she's a cranking. 12, 21 going in there. 24 going in here. So... I've got it cranked about, I think I've got it at 21 amps times 240. The max is 30 amps, and I should be able to run it up to max now that I'm splitting the load. The maximum charge current for these batteries are 100 amps each. So when you're paralleling it, so I might change it. I'm just taking it easy on it. It's my first uh, go around with these. So 50 amps going into that one, 45 going into this one. So. Just curious how these things babies are going to balance out this one is coming up but not as yeah that one's coming up too so we are charging let's see how much power we're putting in Go back to the so we're dumping 5.6 kilowatts into the battery she's working pretty good so she's not mad there's six kilowatts going 5.9. I think it's 6250, maybe 6300. I can't remember the max charge wants of the generator of the inverter. So there you have it, folks. Quite a bit different than a setup with a lead acid battery. The wiring is obviously much simpler. It's got two terminals to connect to. Everything else is done internally, of course, with your BMS or your battery battery management system. You got some cool connectors between the batteries for comms. So hopefully that is working. I don't know how to check to see if it's working. Just hoping it is. 63 amps going to that baby. And 30 going to this one. Hmm. 29, 65. Very interesting. So I guess it's taking the path of least resistance. 91. This one's coming up. So I'm just going to keep an eye on these so I don't have a Chernobyl in my mech room. But anyway, so cool. Sorry for the long video. Some of you asked for longer videos. Some of you asked for shorter videos. I don't know what to do. So I'm trying to give you some more details. Again, this very reliable system's been in for three years. The Outback Radian, two classic charge controllers. I only have about eight, well, I have eight kilowatts of solar. And this was the old flooded lead acid battery workhorse, which I'll always keep. I'm going to get a little maintainer, I think. Depends on what I do. Next is I'm going to put in two solar 12Ks stacked with all sorts of cool solar and maybe even a tracker on it. But uh, these batteries will be hooked to the inverters, the, the 12Ks. And then we'll do more load testing. But I thought until I get that built, um, we're going to do this. We're going to do some running it with the Outback. So just want to show you, you can use the Fortress battery. This is the E-Vault. You can use it as a single battery, double stack it. And uh, it depends on where you read. Sometimes it says eight and then three. I can't remember. Um, I think it's three. It depends on the inverter too. That makes sense. You just want to, don't want to keep stacking. You want to make sure you be able to charge them. So, man, I got 80 amps going in this puppy. Woo! You see that? 80 amps and this one's only got 16 so this kind of 55.1 oh it's doing about it's backing off by voltage well we're going to see if we hit any alarms like the high voltage my bulk voltage should be at 54 so 55.2 seems a little high but we'll uh we'll keep an eye on it up you go to settings and you go to inverter, and then you go to AC input and current limit. And then you'll see the generator charge limit is 22. So 22 times 240 um, is, I mean, uh, is what I'm putting in there. The max is 30. So I think the best, the charging of the battery is, um, they recommend 80 amps going in. So this is AC amps, and these this is DC here. So we just want to make sure we're... Yeah, we're at 80. I'm not too far off. I'm not going to change it right now. This one's only... Yeah, this one's like, back off. I'm full. So not much going in that one. This one says, give me all you got, Captain. 
Okay, so check it out on our website. These are really nice. Just roll them in on casters, got leveling legs, parallel them up, let it rip. So I'm hoping that communication is correct. I'm gonna have to call Fortress tomorrow, just double check. Okay, I'm back after about four or five days now of monitoring the Fortress E vaults with the system. Not a very good solar day today, but uh, one day I was at work and my son said, Dad, let me just uh, jazz up the mech room. So Elijah took off with some LED lights and remotes, and I haven't figured them all out. We haven't put them to music yet, but that can be done. So <laughs> um, so he, he kind of jazzed up the mech room, and the battery's doing great. I think I got all my settings correct for both the the solar charging through the classics to the batteries and then the charger in the radian the settings are all correct both batteries are talking to each other We've got this is the master this is the slave they're both within two tenths of a percent SOC voltage is identical and uh, doing great they're just really doing doing awesome so they are paralleled you can parallel up to eight of these batteries they're 360 amp hours each so stay tuned for some more testing. I'm going to be um, testing some loads in my shop, like a compressor and some other heavy loads to see how they work. Uh, two of these together can do 400 amps for about 10 milliseconds. No, I'm sorry, 10 seconds for surge at 400 amps. So um, I am hoping that I can... Uh, start the compressor i've never been able to do it on the lead acid so i'm going to do a little 48 volt flooded lead acid versus a stacked um fortress power evolt so looking forward to that but anyway i wanted to show you that you can even make electrical panels look cool and make them glow and light up thanks elijah for doing a, a really cool job and it was fun to come home and see his handiwork and uh so if you've got any questions about the batteries, Fortress has a full line of batteries. Uh, we can check them out on our site. We offer the E-Volts, the 5Ks, the 10Ks, and uh, so we can make sure they match up to your inverter. They work with a variety of inverters. Obviously, they're working with the Outback inverters. They work with Schneider. Uh, we're going to be putting these two on my double Solark system when I get a, some room, so a breather, to uh, build my ultimate powerhouse um, a power shed that's what we've been kind of leading a lot of people to in these projects is just to build a separate building that is their generator power pod and uh, so mine's going to be two e-volts two 12ks solarks and about 20k of solar or more whatever we can fit in the budget so all right that's what we're doing uh, let me know what you think about this this is again lead the beginning of lead versus lithium. I, I was dragging my feet, but I'm finally here, and uh, I'm in, I'm really loving it. So the costs have come down if you compare cycles. Like there's 6,000 cycles on this battery, about 16 years versus well, with a lot of babysitting, you can get that baby there, but you definitely can't do the, the discharges that you can do on the lithium. So a lot of benefits, and so let's talk about the pros and cons. Plus. I can just roll this baby in. It's a heck of a lot lighter than this beast. We'll see you later, folks. I'll show you some really cool charging, but it's raining, so it's not putting anything in. But uh, 50 watts on one, 58 on the other. So, um, But look at the glow. It's awesome. Thanks, kid.